Uh, Rabbi, Rabbi, I, I want to ask you something, Carl, if you, you'll just indulge me for a minute. Um, sure. You know, I, what I found interesting was that when, in the movie even, when you go around and you ask, um, you know, questions of the local townspeople, how even though it seemed like something that was kind of, you know, undercover that you're not supposed to talk about, but when you started you know, taking the layers off and asking questions, they all were actually rather forthcoming with sharing their thoughts or what they remember from the stories that they were told, because a lot of them obviously are a little bit older. So, you know, how, how did you how did you find, you know, talking to people that, um, you know, all of a sudden they were, you know, ready to engage in this conversation based on the questions you asked? offer a couple of things that have been happening and this speaks to what Carl what you said about it's sort of in now and kind of cool in a way to uh, have to to have Jewish roots to have an unusual ethnic background and uh, I certainly capitalized upon that and in the old Jewish quarter of Timpone which uh, we also see in the film we, I met with lots of the little little ladies especially who uh, who lived there and one of the first things that happened was we put my we put up a plaque which designated the area as having been Jewish back to the 1100s and that gave a certain sense of pride to the people living there and also because I am I am not I am not the stereotypical elderly male Italian rabbi and the ones that maybe they have seen on TV who seem remote. Now certainly the Italian rabbis are not all remote, but sometimes they seem so on Italian television. But because I walk through the quarter as one of them, I talk to their children, I spend time with them, I get to know them, they are very, very forthcoming because they see a sense of pride in me. They see that glow about me of having found my Jewish roots. And it's... Uh, it makes it makes a personal connection, and uh, they just start talking mostly about their surnames and about the names that they knew that were once Jewish. You know, it's interesting. I grew up in Laurelton, Queens, New York, which is near Kennedy Airport, and uh, we grew up in an area that um, the schools that I went to had uh, Jewish kids, Irish kids, black kids from St. Albans, Springfield Gardens and lots of Italian kids and almost always if there were cross ethnic group contacts, friendships, the kids that you played with or whatever, it was usually the Jewish kids and the Italian kids. And, and I remember going into Italian homes and saying, oh, this is like a Jewish home, just they speak Italian. There was something, whether it was the food or the grandparents, who knows what. Um, you know, in my neighborhood, if there was some intermarriage at the time, we're going back, you know, 40, 50 years, uh, almost inevitably it was a, a mixed Jewish-Italian couple. And even in my father's law practice, uh, as, a, as a Jewish lawyer after World War II, when it was time to have non-Jewish partners in the practice, the partners were almost always Italian. So. Uh, <laughs> So, and, and you know, Al Pacino uh, uh, gave an interview and he said that he grew up in, in less of an Italian neighborhood and more of a Jewish neighborhood in Brooklyn. And he said, but after all, what's a Sicilian but an Italian Jew? Meaning even Al Pacino understood that there was something, some chemistry, uh, yes. maybe inexplicable between Jews and Italians. So my question to you, Rabbi, is this is not just by chance. That's right, and that's what I have found in the, since I have been in uh, Italy working on the, the whole Anasim issue here for the last 12 years. It is not by chance and it is not by coincidence. Uh, our cultural center, our Italian Jewish Cultural Center of Calabria has done a lot of work in, um, in, in, in discerning uh, about, about the Italian, uh, about this, this phenomenon and especially Italian Americans and Italian Canadians. And this is what we found. We found that among intermarriage in, in America and in Canada, of all the possible combinations of a Jewish person and another person, far and away, the majority of interfaith of, of marriages and families are Jewish and Italian. And because we know that prior to the Inquisition, about 50% of the population of Sicily and Calabria and the Aeolian Islands was Jewish.
reach 50%. When you stack that up against the fact that um, that the immigration to the United States and Canada came from the poorest parts of Italy, the islands, Sicily, and Calabria, that 81% of Italian Americans and Italian Canadians come from the South. The chances of an Italian American, like the way you grew up, Carl, with uh, and the way your and, you, and the people in your father's practice, the Italians in your father's practice, the chances are very great, even arithmetically, mathematically, that uh, that that these people that you grew up with, that uh, that 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 Randy grew up with, that our listeners have grown up with, had had originally were Jewish and had Jewish roots. 